Good evening. We're just on time, so uh, we'll get going. It's good to be here this evening and uh, good to see you all. We'll uh, uh, go uh, on from here. For those people I haven't met before, my name is Barry Bland and uh, I'm a doctor, I'm specialized in anesthetics and um, have been involved in near life particularly, but uh, looking at nutrition overall uh, for a number of years and have really enjoyed the uh, change in direction and, uh, you know, a better understanding perhaps of um, just what nutrition can do as far as the body is concerned. Certainly initially, I was very skeptical about everything. I was skeptical about uh, the business model. I was skeptical about the nutritional uh, products and even the whole idea of uh, what nutrition could do. So um, that changed over time uh, and not too long a time either. I, at the time I um, uh, got hepatitis, uh, and my wife insisted that I take a whole lot of nutritional supplementation. It was easier to take it than it was to uh, <laughs> reject it. You know, with what you feel like when you're ill. And of course, uh, it, that's what happened for me. The interesting thing is that I felt the difference. And now this was something that I felt knew could make a difference for, for um, me when I was ill. I just didn't know why. And so um, this was where I wanted to find out more. And uh, I think very fortunate to be involved with a company like Neolife, which has a long history of um, research and development. And in fact, the very first product was as a result of a research program into um, chronic fatigue syndrome. So that was the background. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, I've become more and more um, involved, more and more understanding, um, mainly because of the scientific advisory board, the um, Neo Life Scientific Advisory Board, who, which comprises uh, a number of men and women who are very well thought of in their particular areas of expertise uh, in, um, in food processing, nutritional supplementation, all sorts of things. Um, so whenever I had any questions, I was able to get a credible um, response that just gave me uh, more and more reassurance and understanding of just what nutrition can do. And uh, over the 30 odd years or, or so that this uh, I've been involved, just seeing where nutritional supplementation has gone Obviously, it was always required. There's nothing new. Yeah, you, if you think about it, there is nothing new in our food substances that the body requires in order to be its best and to function efficiently. So we need to make sure that um, what we're getting is food-based, and that is part of Neolife's basic philosophy, based in nature, based in the food, but backed by science. In other words, is there any scientific evidence to show that these things can make a difference? And I think that that is where uh, Neolife has truly um, come into its own over a prolonged period of time. So this is where... Uh, um, uh, this talk this evening is, is really um, starting from. And 
I know that as far as uh, people who know neo life and are have been aware and involved with it, they know about core nutrition, and often that is what is talked about. But what I wanted to do this evening was to go um, with that as the foundation. So let's just go with the foundation. That foundation is the Pro Vitality Pack. The Pro Vitality Pack and protein. Now I'm showing you the sports protein here, but those are the two um, preparations that are really designed to give us the basic core nutrition that we require for a really for a major major benefit as far as your um, your good health is concerned no that nutrition supplementation should be taken in the same way as you take your food consistently every day just like you have with your food so this is where Neolife initiated the whole uh, idea and, and looked at. But where, where they've pushed it further has been able to find the things that are truly pivotal, really necessary. And that is why in the, in the Pro Vitality Pack, there is a basic multivitamin and mineral supplement the TNN oils, which are essential for um, good metabolism and all the rest of it in the body, the carotenoids, which are antioxidants. And I will re um, repeat uh, the fact that they are there um, as a base as we go into the, the main topic of this evening. And then, of course, the omegas, which are anti-inflammatories. Protein, in, in my uh, estimation, and obviously in a lot of people's, uh, is, is a really, really foundational part of good nutrition. Our bodies require all of the 22 amino acids that make up our proteins all of the time in order to make us, in order to build us in order to have all the repair mechanisms that we need. Uh, antibodies, white cells, red cells, <laughs> your lungs, your brain, your heart, your it, everything that you care to think about is either protein or part protein. So protein is very vital as a foundational thing. So that's the core. And we, we thought that we would go beyond the core nutrition this evening. Disease processes in, in the human condition is really, um, ha has been narrowed down to a number of things that are chronic. And as far as those chronic things are concerned, we can, we can think about heart disease, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and, and then the long-term degenerative diseases like um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, those sorts of things. What has happened uh, over a period of time is that those disease processes have been um, put into their proper place and it has been described as the metabolic syndrome. And that metabolic syndrome is a combination of high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, high triglyceride levels, diabetes, and along with that prediabetes or insulin intolerance, and Probably most of us um, think about weight, but what's really interesting, and we'll talk about this, 
is it's not necessarily just your total weight. It is much more related to the amount of visceral fat that you might have. Now, um, visceral fat is the fat of the abdomen. So that might be something that you can't really see. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, some people have um, a fair amount of uh, subcutaneous fat, but uh, under the skin. But the visceral fat appears to be pivotal in your good health. Now, this was a study done over a prolonged period of time. It's been going for a long time, but the particular study that I'm going to be quoting was after 16 years. And that was um, looking at 44,000 healthy, at the time that they entered the trial, healthy nurses. So they were not suffering from any diseases at the time. And these are some of the statistics that came out of that. Uh, if, if the, and this is talking about the measurement of the abdomen. Now, that's the circumference of the abdomen. You put a tape around your, your waist, but preferably at about the level of the, of the belly button, the umbilicus. And they showed very clearly that women, these nurses, who had a, um, a, a circumference greater than 35 inches. Now, that's about 88 centimeters. They had three times the likelihood of cardiovascular disease. Three times. Compared, so those who were greater than that 88 centimeters had three times the risk of heart disease and stroke than uh, those nurses who had a, a circumference less than 30, uh, less than that 88 centimeter. Now that's a very clear um, a dividing point. And what's interesting is that those with a greater circumference than that 88 centimeters were also three times more likely to suffer from other diseases, from all causes, including cancer. So when you look at what those um, the statistics are saying, we need to look very clearly at trying to help sort out this problem of uh, a large waste. Now, for men, <laughs> we're not left out. We have a similar um, uh, situation, but there we are looking at about 97 centimeters circumference. So if the circumference of, around about your belly button is greater than that um, 97 centimeters, men also have a greater incidence of all these diseases. And it all fits down into this um, metabolic syndrome. It appears that the fat of the ab abdomen, the fat, the visceral fat that I was talking about, it's packed around your liver, it's packed around your kidneys, it's packed around the bowel, and all of those things actually assist in raising your LDLs. So cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, it helps to raise those LDLs. It, <clears throat> it raises your triglycerides. It, it tends to raise your blood glucose. In other words, it, it uh, starts you getting into that position of being insulin um, insensitive you're not sensitive to the insulin and therefore your, your uh, blood sugars start climbing all the way through to obviously type 2 diabetes. And then, of course, a high blood pressure and um, 
and that size wise okay so it it really is something that you can target quite carefully so that's the problem is there anything that we can do that will help to make a difference and as i've stated core nutrition is vital that is the ba foundational basis of it and we need to um, be able to look at that and um, uh, decide, um, you, you know, what we're going to do. Make sure that you're taking those things on a consistent basis. But then there are some really uh, amazing um, products that, that, that Neolife has, has produced. And the first that I would look at there is the botanical balance. The botanical balance, <laughs> you could almost say targets all of these things. Um, I'm sure that distributors, uh, if you've been reading your news, you can use or um, a lifestyle magazines, you'll see the people who have been using botanical balance and who have changed their weight. Now, obviously, if you change the circumference of your abdomen, you are going to change your weight. I mean, that <coughs> I beg your pardon, just happens. And th there is so much corroborative evidence to show that if you can change your weight and keep it lower, just by two and a half kgs, that you can change, particularly if you're diabetic, you can change the, the sensitivity of your body to sugars and to insulin, and therefore assist your body in helping to prevent all of the complications of what it, uh, uh, diabetes does. You know, pretty well all diseases are mediated via inflammation, and oxidation. And if you listen to me right at the very beginning, the carotenoids are antioxidants and the omegas are anti-inflammatories. So those are brilliant in that. Now, the thing about particularly botanical balance is that those substances that are in the botanical balance are going to um, be antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, but they also help to control and give you a better control of your blood sugars. And so that, that will uh, kickstart the process of you uh, starting to lose weight. So, it, you know, there, there's so much there that will make a difference for you. And, and I would certainly um, look if, if you are, if you have a high blood pressure, if you have a high cholesterol, if you have uh, a, a, an abdomen that you would like to slim down a little bit, uh, all, of, all of those things really by adding the botanical balance to that, I think you'd, you'd find a marked difference. Think about all of those um, conditions is that they will tend, you, you will tend to be fatigued much more easily when any of those or a number of them are raised. The definition of the metabolic syndrome is that you have three out of those um, five at least uh, conditions. So a high cholesterol, a high triglyceride, a high blood pressure, a high blood sugar, and a, and a large uh, abdominal circumference. So if you have three out of those five, you can be termed to be, to, to be suffering from the metabolic syndrome. And you can make a difference for yourself just with the core and with the, um, the botanical balance. But you... There are other uh, products that really can make a, a massive 
difference there. Uh, for instance, the Neolife tea. That helps to uh, make your um, metabolism more efficient. And you can understand that if your metabolism is more efficient, it just means that you're going to be burning more calories. And in that way, you would be uh, burning up some of your fat stores. And as you do that, you will start changing shape. And that's a, uh, that's a big thing. Other things that will um, uh, assist, and, and as I say, I, I can't ever talk about any condition without actually talking about carotenoids and omega as well, because diabetes, one of the things about diabetics is that they cannot handle oxidation that easily. They've, they struggle with handling it because they, they can't use their sugars properly. And so um, as, they, as they do that, or as they, they uh, uh, don't handle their, their uh, um, blood, their uh, ox oxidation um, situation that well, again, that is where the carotenoids and the um, omegas come in. But I would also look at, at vitamin B co. One of the things that actually helps to run your metabolism is your liver. And if your liver is not adequately um, nourished with all of the things that it needs, all of those core nutrition, but B complex particularly, and B12, uh, I suppose, even more so, uh, as far as the metabolism of the, of the liver is concerned, is necessary. And so I, I, you need to look at something like the B complex as well. And of course, um, uh, as we age, as our, um, as our uh, organs age, we, we sometimes require more particularly with the BCO, as, as our um, gastrointestinal tract uh, ages, you'll often find that it's less likely and less able to absorb enough of the B complex that might be in the diet. And so by adding extra concentration, you are actually getting better. And uh, you know, often people will say, oh, well, I go and get my BCO injection. If you do that, you just bypass all the physiological systems that is designed to be able to utilize those nutrients adequately and properly. All of the blood that comes from the bowel and the nutrients that are in the uh, that you put in through your mouth and go into the bowel and are absorbed, all of those go through the liver first. And the liver handles it. Some of it, it stores. Some of it, it changes. Some of it, it redistributes. If you put it into a muscle, it doesn't go to the liver first. It takes a long time to get to the liver. And so you, what you've done is you change the normal physiological natural process of those nutrients entering the body and you bypass the liver to an extent. So it is important just to remember that. And as long as you have a gastrointestinal tract that is functioning, it's worthwhile taking um, your nutrients that way, all of them. And I'm talking more specifically, I suppose, about the BCO right now. But that's what I would uh, I would recommend. And of course, we always come down to fiber. Fiber in the diet does a number of things. It holds on to sugars so that it, you don't get a, 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 a sugar load dumping in the, in the bowel, into the blood. So that it helps to smooth out your blood sugars. So if you are a diabetic, 
it assists. If you are pre-diabetic, it changes that dumping syndrome and therefore you are less likely to tip over into type two diabetes. And of course, it, just for your general good health, it's worthwhile uh, being on the fiber uh, for the fact that it just holds, holds on to those sugars. But fiber also holds on to some of the things that you're trying to get rid of. So it will hold on to cholesterol in your diet and less be, it would be less likely to absorb, absorb and, and that sort of thing. So fiber is important. And of course, acidophilus. I really do believe acidophilus is, um, is important for everybody at every point in their life, at every day in their life, for their bowel to function normally. I think everybody will agree that if you've been interested in what acidophilus is doing over, over the last uh, probably uh, 10 or 15 years, the research into the, our microbiome of the bowel, it affects everything. And so you've got to have that right. So if you're looking at the metabolic syndrome, that is also going to be part of the process of improving your body's ability to heal itself. You know, you, you might be in the situation where you have maybe all five of those, of, of, of those markers for the metabolic syndrome. And you, you might have them, might have all five. You can make a difference. For yourself by um, discipline there's no doubt consistent nutritional supplementation as well as looking at your diet i'm not saying go on to a crash diet because i really don't recommend that ever and of course things like exercise and if it means walking, start walking. If it means, if, if you would like to do more than that, well then, then do that. But you know, our body is an engine, needs everything, needs the oil, needs the fuel. It needs the movement to, to keep uh, operating. But you know, <laughs> That uh, old adage of what you don't use, you lose. That is exactly what happens with, with us and with our bodies. So use all of the things that are at your disposal to be as well as you can for as long as you can. So that the likelihood of you or the risk of you having a heart, heart attack or a stroke is reduced because you are on poor nutrition. And if you have any of those factors of the, of the metabolic syndrome, then you can actually vary that by looking at things like the botanical balance, the tea, the Bico, acidophilus, fiber. Um, and, you know, Coenzyme Q10, that is so integral in our metabolism. It's the real basic, basic driver in a way of our metabolism. And what we're talking about with the metabolic syndrome is that our meta metabolism is not functioning correctly. And if we can improve that, so much the better. So while coenzyme Q10 may not um, uh, sound too uh, focused in, in what we're talking about, I would very definitely look at using because it, it just empirically, it comes right in at the foundation and would help 
the, the body to function better. Okay. 